I would like to welcome Jay uh, to come on stage. Um, so Jay is a, a chairman and CEO of uh, Gorilla Technologies. Um, welcome, Jay. Thank you, Jay. I think uh, my team got a little too carried away today. Um, we're, we're in Bangkok, aren't we? I think we're going to Pattaya in about a couple of days. So we'll chill till then and we'll stay in Bangkok. Well, for me, Bangkok is one of the greatest cities in the world. Am I correct? Come on, guys. I know you've just had your food. Can you be a bit more louder? Thank you. Well, most importantly, the reason I like Bangkok is because I've lived here for some time. For people who do not know me, Pomyuti Mangtai Praman Isip Song Pi Lao Kap. Uh, and I love Thailand, and what is interesting for me about Bangkok is, um, I, I'll leave, I'll it, leave to, it to you, yeah, thank sorry. you, Jay. What's interesting about Bangkok for me is um, the rich cultural heritage, um, the people, they're absolutely fantastic, but more importantly, the sumptuous food, um, the shopper's delight, the vibrant nightlife, but more importantly, the quality of life and the acceptance of technology. Today, I see myself being part of the Intel Summit. So I'm very thankful uh, for all, of, at, uh, all at Intel to having me over and making sure that I am here to, oops, sorry, um, that I'm here to actually talk about a little more about AI and artificial intelligence. Now, speaking of intelligence, now, I know a lot of people talked about um, AI and HAI, but did you know the very basic thing that in, in this country of Thailand, elephants are considered holy, but more importantly, they're also considered very intelligent animals. Now, they can, um, they can remember parts, they can solve problems, but more importantly, they can also actually code. No, that's not true. Right? They can actually paint with their trunks. But since they can already paint with their trunks, why the hell can't we actually teach them how to code? Right? At least we've not figured that out yet. Now, that makes me wonder, if elephants can learn to paint, why can't our businesses learn to adopt AI more effectively? Right? Now, what is interesting for me is that if we as humans have evolved it allows me to, or it pains me to tell you that more than 85% of the projects today in AI have effectively not been successful. Why? It's not because, you know, um, your business is not good, or it does not mean that AI has failed, or it doesn't mean that it, it is not intelligent enough. It just needs you to understand your business. You have to have more than intelligence, understanding the landscape of your business, right? And I think that is very important for everybody to understand. Now, before jumping onto the AI bandwagon, the first step is to not look outward, but to look inward. Now, understanding the core challenges of your business is very, very, very important. It's like preparing your businesses to fail, but at the same time making sure that you're succeeding at the, at, at the point. Now, all of you understand that you cannot you know, plant a rose in the middle of a desert and expect it to grow if, as much of soil as you want to put, as much as water as you want to put on it, right? Now, let's drill that a little more deeper because most customers who wake up every morning and call me and they're like, Jay, we have this problem. I want AI to solve my problem. That doesn't work, right? All I tell them is, allow me to help you help your business, right? The first most important point, laying the foundation is absolutely paramount, right? Regardless of who, what, and what the size of your business is, whether you're an SME or an enterprise, the most important thing is you have to understand what your current challenges of your business are. This involves not just identifying the challenges, but also understanding why your previous solutions haven't worked. Right? If you cannot understand why your previous solutions haven't worked, guess what? You're bound to fail. Now, second, understanding the strategic fit. Now, when I say strategic fit, most people also under try and put, you know, they try to create a map of their problems. They'll see where AI can truly make a difference. That's great. 
but it is not about using AI as a strategic tool, but more importantly, understanding how it can benefit your business, not just about building it for the sake of talking at tech conferences like these. The final most important is measured implementation. Now, we can spend hundreds of millions of dollars on a particular solution, but at the same time, I would actually engage in every single customer to deploy at the barest minimum, right? Understand what your ROI is. Be very cautious, be very measured. It's like introducing um, a, a new character on a long-running TV show, right? If the person does not fit the plot, guess what? Your TV show fails at the end of the day, and we've understood that many a time. Now, we're all talking about AI here. We're the AI summit. It's interesting. But the market today has grown explosively. Now, we're looking at a massive leap from, what, $244 billion in 2025 to about $822 billion in 2030. Now, that's an eye-popping 35% growth. For people who have not realized that, in 2023, we grew at about 35%. In 2024, we are actually growing at about 32%. Uh, that, that's on an average CAGR of about 24%, give or take, right? Now, if we're seeing that kind of a growth, I won't like to compare that with the likes of, let's say, Internet of Things, which grew at about 19%, and Public Cloud, which actually grew at about 16%. Now, what's driving this expansion? It's all about growing accessibility and sophistication of the AI systems, which are getting better and better day by day. But more importantly, it's about solving those problems which customers have, and more importantly, the adaptability. Now, at the cutting edge of this revolution today, we're expecting that the generative AI, which is expected to roughly you know, make up about $356 billion of the market by, 20, by 2030. Now, we've all witnessed the evolution from, you know, of, of the chat GPT-4 um, with language models, as we call them, um, in 2023, they've made waves. But looking at anything beyond 2024 um, and, and, and beyond, after, of course, um, I'm, I believe multimodal AI is actually going to set to unlock um, new economic opportunities. Um, they are ready for allowing a more what we call natural, intuitive, context-aware interactions. But however, right? Let's keep our expectations to the barest minimum. Let's be grounded. Because AI isn't your magic tool which is going to solve all your problems overnight. It's a powerful tool, but like any tool, it has its effectiveness, which will only depend on how we use it and whether we use it effectively and, more importantly, efficiently. Now, my personal request for all of you is to be a part of the 15%. Let's not be part of the 85% which fails. Let's be, try and be part of the 15% that truly succeed. Let's approach it very thoughtfully with a very clear understanding of our goals, our vision, our challenges. Okay? Let's not dream AI. Right? It's not going to help you in any way if you start dreaming AI. Let's do it responsibly and effectively. Now, that said, um, I'm going to leave this. <laughs> it's quite funny. For me, um, launching an AI project is, um, without a solid strategy is like going to a Thai massage without specifying your pre preferred pressure level. You, know, you may walk in very excited, but when you get out of it, you're going to be in pain, you're going to be in anguish, and you're going to be disappointed. Right? And more importantly, you're going to be twisted. So let's all get relaxed. We're in Thailand. Let's all get our Thai massage. But that said, Kun Pechea, that's exactly what I'm going to go after the Intel AI event. Wish me luck. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you.